Hello, my name is Rick Brown. I'm the MS4 coordinator here in LaPorte County. Um, the reason that we're here today is I'm going to explain a little bit about erosion control, what it is. Uh, you folks are going to be uh, taking a little short quiz. Uh, and the quiz is basically going to be based on why do we even have erosion control, what is erosion control, and some of the items that we actually do within an erosion control plan when we get them from contractors. It's called a SWIP, a Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan. So basically, um, I will be going through some clips in the movie that you'll be watching today. will just be a brief presentation of what we do on an elementary level, and then you'll be taking the quiz. We're looking at a stormwater pollution prevention plan here. And what this is, what I look for, what this is going to be telling us is when, this, when they build this building, the water has to run off somewhere and somehow. And this will give us all the information of where the water runs to inlets, et cetera, et cetera, how it runs off. And also they're gonna be telling us and showing us architecturally how they're preventing the water from running off of this construction project site. That's what we look for and that's the goal, to keep it on site and keep it clean. Sediment is the number one polluter in Indiana. I can show you right here on this site, all this dirt is sediment. Well, where does that come from? It comes from tires, it comes from bucket trucks. Uh, this actual sedimentation, or let's call it erosion, that's created from wind, rain, breaking that stuff loose and blowing it all over. Blowing it all over the site, blowing it all over the port, whatever. We have street sweepers, we have various things to clean it, but sedimentation itself is the number one polluter in Indiana. BMP, best management practices. There are many of them. Um, what you see behind me here is silt fence. When they were doing work over here, they put this around the perimeter. And why? Because of what we just got through talking about with sediment being covered um, by wind, raindrop explosions, and all that stuff wanting to run to lower areas. You use this to protect it within the construction site itself. This is that black silt fence. Another thing over here to my left, you'll see a big portion of it. Uh, when it's correctly installed, you can't pull it out of the ground, so this is correct. This is a construction entrance, big heavy number two rock, which is also a best management practice. Um, and they have sedimentation around their site. However, when you look at this, this is not good. We're on this site for a specific reason. So you can actually visualize when it's not good also. do this uh, protection of our environment because of, a, of a, an act passed a long time ago started around Richard Nixon's era but it, basically it was um, called the Clean Water Act and Clean Water Act has various rules and specifications in it so we can't hurt our environment with sedimentation pollutants things that in industry puts out etc 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 and there's one important thing that you need to know. MS4s are in place to actually protect contractors that don't do the best jobs because supervisors could be actually arrested or sued for not following. MS4s things. have the ability when contractors don't listen to what we're trying to get them to do to keep our environment clean for all of us. And they're these stop work orders or STOs Basically, we could stop the project because the contractor's not listening to us and not going by the rules. And by the way, that SWIP that we talked about earlier, the Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan, that's their guidance document that they need to go by. And if they're not going by it, we can issue stop work orders, which stops the project. 
and then they have to show us, tell us exactly what they're gonna to do to follow the slip plan. We get things called splash erosion. And what that is, is when a raindrop hits a hard surface, it actually bounces back and flares out. That's splash erosion, because the wind, the rain can move that water. This is a hard surface. So when rain hits this, it splashes up like this. It splashes up, wind and stuff can move it. Now right in here, we have wood chips. When rain hits this, it's not gonna be splashing out. Um, and we have this, all this vegetation and stuff behind us. This is excellent stuff to prevent splash erosion. The wood chips, the plants, the vegetation because water is going to actually infiltrate and go into all of this. And that's what we try to do with splash erosion. And even if we use erosion control mats, which you guys have all seen, they're, they look kind of like straw and stuff, and they're knit, and they lay them out on project sites. Rain hits that, and it, we minimize our splash erosion so the water stays on the site so we can maintain it on the site, doesn't run off the site. That's our goal. This is one thing that owners, contractors have to do. They have to mount the notice of intent. What, the, what is the project? What are they intending to do? They have to have a clear view for the public, the name of the project, who the owner is, contact information. This, this is a very good one because it actually is a hospital project. So they have a little bit more here than most, but they also, this, form the NOI notice of intent this this also gets sent to IDEM I review it approve it and it gets sent to IDEM you have to have this notice of intent posted notice of intent means you intend to go by the stormwater rules plans even though they are exactly what they're going to do on the job uh, field conditions sometimes mean that there has to be some slight changes that is allowed you have to get it approved by the local MS4 but that is allowed to do minimal changes to a slip plan. It's construction, it happens. You've all seen stockpiles where they, they're doing a project, they're starting it, they're pulling all the dirt off at the top and they're making big piles. All those piles have to have protection around them or over them within a 10 day period. Um, in the review process, I just showed you the NOI notice of intent on the board, but in the review process itself, MS4s have to get back to the architect or engineer that submitted the SWIP plan, the Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan, to me to review. I have 10 to 14 days to get back with them that it looks sufficient. One of the things that uh, you'll see on the quiz is an acronym called NPDES. That is the National Pollutant Discharge and Elimination Systems, is what that stands for. And that's a government agency that actually is responsible for how water, construction water, uh, all kinds of water is actually discharged into our lands and our environment. Concrete trucks are not allowed just to dump their concrete down on the ground anywhere because of the chemicals that are in the concrete. Um, we have things that we actually use there are products that are made and you can use straw like what like what you'll see here you stake it down and you use a 10 mil visqueen in thickness and you overlap it and that's where the concrete trucks can drop it into that's the responsibility of the contractor usually that decision is made is where that's going to be as they start the project because that is a movable item they can move it and you know, because of construction and trucks and, and location is important, it's sometimes identified on the sites, but it's usually winds up being somewhere else. And actually on this project behind me, it was out here in the center. And now what you're seeing in with this straw is there's an inlet here and we have this type of inlet protection while the vegetation is growing in. So the, the dirty water or the water growing across this as it's seeded and stuff, and it hasn't grown up yet, but it is seeded, we're protecting that inlet. So this is actually what we're doing to protect it. The concrete company does not make the decision of where the washout will be, it's the general contractor. Erosion control reports. We have to have these after every half inch rain, and we require that uh, every week we have one of these, even without rain. We have a 
training quiz that we have developed, the Port County MS for. This is all my entities, and they do it there also. But they have to take this quiz and send it in and pass it. That qualifies them to be a trained individual, which they have to by state statute and local ordinance have to be a trained individual. And um, what I talked about briefly was after every half inch rain and weekly reports come in. When they become a trained individual, they pass our quiz. We furnish them an MS4 rain gauge so they can put it on their job trailer so they know how much rain we're getting and just as a little token of our appreciation from getting training from LaPorte County MS4. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I just want to let you know that this presentation, uh, you should now have enough information to take the quiz. Uh, your supervisor or MS4 will be passing out the quizzes to you. We've covered everything that would be on the quiz, and thank you very much for being a participant.